day to the citizens of this world. Anonymous TV Reporting Fidel Castro, the fiery apostle of revolution who brought the Cold War to the Western Hemisphere in 1959 and then defied the United States for nearly half a century as Cuba's maximum leader, bedeviling 11 American presidents and briefly pushing the world to the brink of nuclear war, died Friday. He was 90. His death was announced by Cuban state television. In declining health for several years, Mr. Castro had orchestrated what he hoped would be the continuation of his communist revolution, stepping aside in 2006 when he was felled by a serious illness. He provisionally ceded much of his power to his younger brother Raul, now 85, and two years later formally resigned as president. Raul Castro who had fought alongside Fidel Castro from the earliest days of the insurrection and remained Minister of Defense and his brother's closest confidant, has ruled Cuba since then, although he has told the Cuban people he intends to resign in 2018. Fidel Castro had held on to power longer than any other living national leader except Queen Elizabeth II. He became a towering international figure whose importance in the 20th century far exceeded what might have been expected from the head of state of a Caribbean island nation of 11 million people. He dominated his country with strength and symbolism from the day he triumphantly entered Havana on January 8, 1959, and completed his overthrow of Fulgencio Batista by delivering his first major speech in the capital before tens of thousands of admirers at the vanquished dictator's military headquarters. A spotlight shone on him as he swaggered and spoke with passion until dawn. Finally, white doves were released to signal Cuba's new peace. When one landed on Mr. Castro, perching on a shoulder, the crowd erupted, chanting Fidel. Fidel. To the war-weary Cubans gathered there and those watching on television, it was an electrifying sign that their young, bearded guerrilla leader was destined to be their savior. Most people in the crowd had no idea what Mr. Castro planned for Cuba. A master of image and myth. Mr. Castro believed himself to be the messiah of his fatherland, an indispensable force with authority from on high to control Cuba and its people. He wielded power like a tyrant, controlling every aspect of the island's existence. He was Cuba's maximal leader. From atop a Cuban army tank, he directed his country's defense at the Bay of Pigs. Countless details fell to him from selecting the color of uniforms that Cuban soldiers wore in Angola to overseeing a program to produce a superb breed of milk cows. He personally set the goals for sugar harvests. He personally sent countless men to prison. But it was more than repression and fear that kept him and his totalitarian government in power for so long. He had both admirers and detractors in Cuba and around the world. Some saw him as a ruthless despot who trampled rights and freedoms, many others hailed him as the crowds did that first night, as a revolutionary hero for the ages. Even when he fell ill and was hospitalized with diverticulitis in the summer of 2006, giving up most of his powers for the first time, Mr. Castro tried to dictate the details of his own medical care and orchestrate the continuation of his communist revolution, engaging a plan as old as the revolution itself. By handing power to his brother, Mr. Castro once more raised the ire of his enemies in Washington. United States officials condemned the transition, saying it prolonged a dictatorship and again denied the long-suffering Cuban people a chance to control their own lives. But in December 2014, President Obama used his executive powers to dial down the decades of antagonism between Washington and Havana by moving to exchange prisoners and normalize diplomatic relations between the two countries, a deal worked out with the help of Pope Francis and after 18 months of secret talks between representatives of both governments. Though increasingly frail and rarely seen in public, Mr. Castro even then made clear his enduring mistrust of the United States. A few days after President Obama's highly publicized visit to Cuba in 2016, the first by a sitting American president in 88 years, 
Mr. Castro penned a cranky response denigrating Mr. Obama's overtures of peace and insisting that Cuba did not need anything the United States was offering. To many, Fidel Castro was a self-obsessed zealot whose belief in his own destiny was unshakable, a chameleon whose economic and political colors were determined more by pragmatism than by doctrine. But in his chest beat the heart of a true rebel. Fidel Castro, said Dr. Henry M. Riston, president of the Council on Foreign Relations in the 1950s and early 60s, was everything a revolutionary should be. Mr. Castro was perhaps the most important leader to emerge from Latin America since the wars of independence in the early 19th century. He was decidedly the most influential shaper of Cuban history since his own hero, Jose Marti, struggled for Cuban independence in the late 19th century. Mr. Castro's revolution transformed Cuban society and had a long-lasting impact throughout the region than that of any other 20th century Latin American insurrection with the possible exception of the 1910 Mexican Revolution. His legacy in Cuba and elsewhere has been a mixed record of social progress and abject poverty, of racial equality and political persecution, of medical advances and a degree of misery comparable to the conditions that existed in Cuba when he entered Havana as a victorious guerrilla commander in 1959. That image made him a symbol of revolution throughout the world and an inspiration to many imitators. Hugo Chavez of Venezuela considered Mr. Castro his ideological godfather. Subcommander Marcos began a revolt in the mountains of southern Mexico in 1994, using many of the same tactics. Even Mr. Castro's spotty performance as an aging autocrat in charge of a foundering economy could not undermine his established image. But beyond anything else, it was Mr. Castro's obsession with the United States, and America's obsession with him, that shaped his rule. After he embraced communism, Washington portrayed him as a devil and a tyrant and repeatedly tried to remove him from power through an ill-fated invasion at the Bay of Pigs in 1961, an economic embargo that has lasted decades, assassination plots and even bizarre plans to undercut his prestige by making his beard fall out. Mr. Castro's defiance of American power made him a beacon of resistance in Latin America and elsewhere, and his bushy beard, long Cuban cigar and green fatigues became universal symbols of rebellion. Mr. Castro's understanding of the power of images, especially on television, helped him retain the loyalty of many Cubans even during the harshest periods of deprivation and isolation when he routinely blamed many of Cuba's ills on America and its embargo. And his mastery of words in thousands of speeches, often lasting hours, imbued many Cubans with his own hatred of the United States by keeping them on constant watch for an invasion, military, economic or ideological, from the North. Interactive feature, Castro's Revolution, illustrated thousands of posters were commissioned by the government to promote his vision of a socialist society. Over many years Mr. Castro gave hundreds of interviews and retained the ability to twist the most compromising question to his favor. In a 1985 interview in Playboy magazine, he was asked how he would respond to President Ronald Reagan's description of him as a ruthless military dictator. Let's think about your question, Mr. Castro said, toying with his interviewer. If being a dictator means governing by decree, then you might use that argument to accuse the Pope of being a dictator. He turned the question back on Reagan, if his power includes something as monstrously undemocratic as the ability to order a thermonuclear war, I ask you, who then is more of a dictator, the President of the United States President? Sincerely yours your Uber driver. We are the truth that's hiding in the dark. We are the last stand for humanity. We are your neighbors. We are humanity. We are a legion. And we are now. We do not forget. Expect us. We do not forget. Expect, expect, expect us. us. Sincerely yours. And we are now. The sanitation man. Expect Special us. Special shout outs in Ohio. Inspect. Operation second and the Anonymous Collective. And I had to start again Just my children and my wife I thank my luck